Chippewa Lake is a small settlement about 250 miles by plane north of Edmonton and it's because it's an isolated community. Some people still live in the old ways and the, and the people here in the museum from Edmonton hired my dad to build a birch bark canoe using no nails, no tar, no canvas. No, nothing that would be taken out from the store. And it's quite a bit of work to do this, to build a first park canoe. It takes around three months to, to make it. The birch bark canoe has long since gone into disuse, leaving very few native craftsmen with the skills and knowledge of techniques necessary to meet the challenge of building a similar craft today. Arnold Orr is one of the exceptions. Hence, the Provincial Museum of Alberta commissioned him to build a canoe in the manner of his Cree ancestors. When all materials are ready, the form is laid out using young spruce, which are trimmed to lengths to match that of the wood already cut for the canoe. Sheets of birch bark can be placed into the form once a thick layer of peat moss covers the bottom. To achieve a durable, well-balanced canoe involves innumerable calculations and attention to many details of construction. But equally important, and just as time-consuming, is the selection of materials and their preparation, which means the coordination of work stages so all parts are ready at the right moment. First of all, the spruce components must be cut to length, planed into boards, bent into shape where needed, and left to dry. Meanwhile, large sheets of birch bark are acquired whereafter they are moistened and placed in a cool, shady location with a cover of soil or other weight. This procedure prevents drying and the possibility of the bark cracking when applied. Similarly, spruce roots are gathered, then split, and left to soak for three or four days before sewing begins. After the form is finished, he'll, he'll straighten up the spurt spark on his form and put some heavy rocks in them from keeping that bark coming up and start uh, putting the sticks all around it. And then he soak put some water on these, on, on, put some water on a birch bark so it will keep it from curving up and start showing now. The floor and sides of the canoe pose minor problems compared to the assembly of the bow and stern, which represent a critical stage of construction if the craft is to be balanced and side-to-side -side symmetry maintained. With the top sides laced to the gunnel, the stem is inserted into the bow piece. Wooden pegs act as guides to hold the stem in position as the bark is trimmed and stitching started. These series of operations are repeated at the other end of the canoe. Both ends of the canoe will look identical, but there is a front and a rear to the craft, and this is determined by the overlap at the joints. That is to say, the water must flow past the joint 
not contrary to it. that prevented the bottom from shifting are removed along with numerous wooden braces which temporarily rounded out the sides. They are no longer required once the stem and stern have been lined up. Arnold undertakes the job of collecting roots, he calculates the amount needed to finish the canoe. Out of the total amount, only two or three bundles are soaked at a given time. In other words, the bundles are prepared as needed. There is no problem in predetermining that. For example, a certain quantity of roots are required within four days. The difficulty arises when the material is ready, but rain forces postponement of work for the better part of a week. Under such circumstances, Arnold's experience plays a key role. In this case, the roots will not be left to oversoak, nor will they be allowed to lose sufficient moisture to become unusable. The bow of the canoe commands special attention. It has to be straight and on center. And because this part of the craft receives more bumps and wear and tear than most other areas, it is well laced in a pattern not found elsewhere on the canoe. Generally, Arnold works alone, but the idea of building a 14-foot birch bark canoe inspired his sons Jimmy and Elziar to become involved. They are not exactly novice assistants, having a father that has always provided insight into traditional modes of construction. Nevertheless, on the canoe project, Arnold oversees everything they do and gives instruction where needed. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
It's interesting to note that the canoe has not only prompted the interest of Jimmy and Elsiar, but in a similar way, it has held a magic-like attraction for other residents as well. In particular, teenagers and younger men have become the most frequent visitors to the building site and the most curious. In all of this, Arnold has been continually swamped by questions. As the canoe gradually nears completion, Arnold focuses his attention on preparing measurements for the spruce floor stringers or floorboards. But the flooring will not be affixed now. Neither will the ribs, until all interior seams are treated with spruce gum. to say the canoe must be watertight and boiled spruce gum does the trick. This technique has always been used by the woodland Cree in the construction of birch bark canoes. But it has one big disadvantage. Spruce pitch melts when exposed to the hot sun. It was therefore imperative that the user of a canoe always leave it in a shady location when pulled to shore. This may seem like a major drawback, but on the other hand, repairs could be made easily and anywhere as long as spruce or pine were handy. In contrast to its predecessors, this canoe will never reach the lake, for it was created for a different purpose. Even in its construction, it affected the community unlike any other canoe previously built here. It was a novelty to the younger generation, and the old men looked upon the canoe with a tinge of sadness and recalled the days when they were young when game was plentiful, when the calls of the pelican and eagle were common, and the roar of the outboard motor was unknown. The canoe is now in the museum, standing as a tribute to the work of Arnold Orr and to Chippewyan Lakes, where a craftsman is still capable of producing a canoe that makes the old people nod with pride. Thank you.